In this video, we're looking at three facts and one opinion. I want to base my opinion on these three facts. So the three facts that we're going to look at. Number one, how much power does this wind turbine make? It's rated for 400 watts at 800 RPM. So we're going to measure that. Number two, will it apply a brake to the turbine in order to prevent overspeed at the voltage that it says it will? So that's, that's a listed spec for this turbine. We're gonna find out if it works the way it says it does. Third, will it overcharge a 12 volt battery? It's supposed to stop charging at a certain voltage. We're gonna find out if it does or not. And based on the facts that I gathered during this video, I'm gonna kind of give my opinion on whether this wind turbine is worth it or not. So if you guys are interested, stick around. Amazon has many options for inexpensive turbines in the four to 500 watt range. So I figured I would grab one and see how it performed. Uh, I already had a lot of the testing instruments that could be used to find out how much it could perform without actually putting it up on the turbine tower yet. There were a couple that had their ratings listed in RPM. So this one showed that at 800 RPM, it would hit the rated 400 watts. So I've got it all set up on the bench. I've got a tachometer to see what RPM it's at. I've got a corded drill that will pull it up to that RPM. And I've got it set up, obviously the, the wind turbine. So I've got my cords coming out the bottom and this is what they call a, a wild AC. It's not a constant voltage, not a constant amperage and it's three phase. And this runs into uh, this controller, and this is the controller that came with the wind turbine. So uh, I think this is pretty standard. You know, if you go on Alibaba or Amazon or whatever, you just go get a controller. This is this is probably what you would get. So you've got your wild uh, three phase coming in with your green wires, and then you've got your 12 volt output here. Uh, one thing to watch out for, and I, I caught this on some of the Amazon reviews, is in the instructions, which it's not much instructions, but in the instructions they do say, make sure that you connect your 12 volt source or your destination, however you put that, before you connect your turbine. So something apparently in this can blow if you do that the other way around. So green light indicates it's connected. You'll see that here. So green light's connected. So then I'm going to then I'm going to my monitor here. So you can see here my battery is sitting at about 11.6 volts, and we've got zero watts going across. This one here will cycle between the like the max that it's seen, and then this is how many amps. The top left is how many amps currently um, at that top right voltage. So that will show me the power that's leaving the controller through my meter into my battery. And then for my battery, I've got this 12 volt inverter. That's a little overkill for our test today, but that's what I had. So from the inverter here then, I've got my, I was using my soldering iron, but I've got this uh, box fan here. Um, so I can change the speed on the box fan. I believe when I've tested this previously, the box fan was running like 150, 200 watts. Should be quite sufficient for our test today. Um, I've also got my multimeter set up. It's a little redundant. This is showing 11.67 volts as opposed to the 11.59 here. So it's a little off. That could be because this guy's pulling a little bit of voltage, a little bit of power out of it. I'm not sure. But anyway, that was just kind of redundant to check to see if it's the same. Then of course I've got my tachometer and I've got my clamp on here because I don't like having to push the button in order to get it to read. So on the shaft of the turbine, I went ahead and I taped this off because it was reflecting on the chrome. And then I put my little reflective tape that came with the tachometer. So I'll be able to read the speed of this shaft with my tachometer. And then I bought this drill. And I bought this drill because I'll show you my other drill. I had a drill. Ugh. It's the Harbor Freight Special. I think this thing was like 16 bucks. But you can see it does show 0 to 3000 RPM, but it's only 3.2 amps at 120 volts. So what's that put you at? Like uh, 400 watts or so. And that's output from the drill. 
So if you're trying to generate 400 watts worth of electricity from a turbine, you cannot assume 100% efficiency. And I would honestly be surprised at 50% efficiency. So 400 watt drill is not gonna do it. And that drill could power this up to about 125 watts or so, uh, which I figure, I say 125. No, I think that drill could get about to 100, 100 watts. Um, this other drill that I had, or that I had borrowed anyway, is a half inch drill. And while it had plenty of power, this is nine amps at 120 volts, right? So that's almost a thousand, that's over a thousand watts. Uh, the problem was it was 850 RPM. So it maxed out around 800 RPM, which in reality was probably about right. But I wasn't sure if the controller was going to apply more torque to the coils. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that works, but I believe it is variable and I wasn't sure if that's what was causing it to max out. If, if there was a curve where um, you hit 800 RPM, it's still at the same RPM, but it'll still be creating more power at the same RPM. So, wasn't sure on that piece. But anyway, what about this drill? So this drill is an 800 watt, but since it's a 3 8 drill, it'll do that 2700 RPM, and so this, proved to be sufficient. So we're going to power, and, and you'll see that the shaft here is an Allen key, which is used for tightening up the, um, the blade that goes onto here, the mounting bracket. So I was able to just get my Allen key here, and I can pop this in right there, and power it up. Anyway, so let's um, let's juice this up. So I'm going to first turn my fan on. Um, so while I, if I turn this on to three, you'll see my voltage has dropped to 10.97. So let's get this powered up before the inverter thinks that that's too low. This is what I get out of that. At uh, 780 RPM, I believe that's what we were at, uh, at the below 1300 mark, we were hitting 95 watts. So that was with pulling from the box fan on high, as well as my two fluorescent bulbs here, which are, these are 26 watt bulbs, so it's probably about 50 watts worth of bulbs. And the voltage still wasn't over it was 12 something volts, certainly not up in the 14 volt range, which is what you would expect with a battery being charged at full capacity. So uh, definitely not producing what you'd expect of a 400 watt turbine. So this turbine is supposedly rated for at 800 RPM to do 400 watts. What we saw was that at 780 RPM, it was doing 95 watts. And then the next step up for my drill was, I believe it was 1200 RPM, and we were getting up into the 200 something watt range. So let's see what the highest we got was. 187 watts peak. So if we get up to 1200 RPM, we can get up to about half the rated wattage for the turbine, but the turbine is rated for 800, 800 RPM, not for 1200 RPM. So first of all, I'm not sure when the overspeed cutoff occurs. 
Um, I did not experience that. I wasn't able to get it spinning fast enough to get some overspeed. Uh, it could just be that it relies on generating enough electricity that the voltage on the 12 volt side gets high enough that it will go ahead and go into overspeed mode and short out the three phase. I did have it do that. So when I was playing around, I'll show you here in a second. I was playing around with it with a bad battery. I've got a battery that's only at about six volts. It would start charging and then it would um, appear to go into cutout mode. So let me show you what that's like. All right, so we're gonna swap out this battery. So you can see this one's reading at about 11.56 volts. If I check this other battery here that I've got, we're at six volts. So not a good battery, um, but I'm, I'm suspecting that this will show us what it's like when we go into over voltage. I'm not sure exactly how it knows. All right, so we've got five volts with it trying to pull power for the inverter. You'll see that um, our meter is not turned on. You have to have a certain amount of voltage for this to turn on, otherwise you need external power. But I do have a green light on here, so I'm not worried about this guy. So let's spin this up a little bit and see what it does. I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm holding the drill at a constant speed, and it's giving me a lot of resistance. So that, that's what it does with this low voltage battery. And I don't know, that could be that could be something that I shouldn't be worrying about. I really don't know. But let's let's put the good battery back on. Let's not connect the inverter and see what happens if it goes into over voltage. So it should not overcharge the battery. So it's up in the 14 volt range that it says it's supposed to cut off. I'm not, I'm not connecting that. It's supposed to cut off and stop charging. So let's see what it does then and if it, if it breaks the, the wind turbine at that point. All right, so we're at 11.6 volts here. Pop my drill in. Here we are charging the battery up. 25 watts. So I don't know if y'all saw that. So it did not break the turbine. But what it did do is it stopped putting out current into the battery. So let's do that again and see what it does. So turbine spinning but no voltage going in the battery. Now let's start again. Probably one of the least efficient ways of charging a battery there. So let's, let's go look up when it's supposed to stop charging or stop, start breaking because I believe that was a feature listed for this turbine, but I could get up to 1300 RPM and it was not breaking. So it makes me wonder how fast you'd have to go before it started breaking. So rated speed is 800 RPMs a minute. I'm sorry, 800, 800 revolutions per minute. Break voltage is 14 and a half. So what we saw is at about 14 and a half, it stopped giving voltage to the battery, but I didn't see it break. The battery overcharging, so that we did not actually see. So that's interesting. So, because we didn't hit 16 and a half. I suppose if I had kept charging the battery, maybe it would eventually reach that high without me having to go to 14 and a half generation volts. 
but why would the brake voltage be lower than the battery overcharging protection? I'm not sure on that. So I think with this turbine, it's really an expectation thing. Depending on what I wanted to do with it, I, I could keep it. What I wanted was something that starts at a low wind speed, which I, I don't technically know at this point. I'd have to get it up and find out. But if I could get something that was generating five or 10 watts 24 seven, I think I'd be happy with that. A lot of the turbines seem to start at a higher wind speed. This one's rated for a lower wind speed. Now I don't actually know how accurate that is yet. I'll have to put it up on a tower with an anemometer and see at what wind speed does it actually start turning and then when does it actually start making power. So those are definitely other questions that I'd like to answer. But I think this concludes my bench testing, which shows no, it will not create 400 watts. Most I got was 200 and that was spinning it at a much faster speed than they claim it will cr create that power at. I don't have a lot of gale force winds here. We're looking at 10 to 15 miles an hour, 30 feet in the air. So not gonna do me a whole lot of good for generating something like 400 watts. I, I, think, I think the best I'm gonna do is maybe getting five or 10 watts an hour out of it, which maybe that would be enough for uh, charging a small 12 volt, having some lights shining it on the driveway, or powering a camera to something, something real low power that I could run off of this. Is it worth 160 bucks? I think at a hobby level, if you're playing around with a wind turbine, um, sure. If you're actually looking at generating enough electricity to pay for itself, I think you'd have to be in an off-grid situation where getting electricity to where you want it would have to be very expensive in order for something like this to be worth it. And in that case, I think it'd have to be somewhere where you don't have much sun because a solar panel would be, in my opinion, less maintenance, less cost up front, in which case you would get more power for what you have. You can buy a lot of solar panel for 160 bucks. You can buy you can buy industrial panels say that were taken off of a solar farm for maybe 100 150 bucks that would get you 300 watts and i've tested some of those panels and that's a that's a fairly realistic number for full sun so if you're able to get you know even in the winter time you know getting 250 watts an hour for six hours of the day that's blows this little wind turbine out of the water and you don't have to mount a solar panel 30 foot in the air. I think that concludes the bench test for this little wind turbine. You guys should let me know if this helped you make a decision on what you're doing, whether you're doing an off-grid or an on-grid installation, or you're doing something hobby level, which is kind of what I'm doing at this point, because I know that I'm not gonna get enough wattage out of a small turbine to do much good. But yeah, let's, let's talk about it down below. Let me know if I missed something that you would like to see. Thanks.